Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at the Sarmatians and the Golden Liberty. However, before we begin, just a quick reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. Mythology tells us one thing, while archaeology tells us another. The Sarmatians a name one doesn't hear every day. Who were these ancient people who invaded Eastern Europe and greatly influenced the local people and cultures? Today we will answer that question as we take a look at these extraordinary people known as the Sarmatians. The Sarmatians were a large Iranian confederacy that existed in classical antiquity. They flourished from the 5th century BCE to the 4th century AD. The Sarmatians originated in the central parts of the Eurasian steppes and were part of the wider Scythian cultures. The Sarmatians began migrating westward during the 4th and 3rd centuries BCE and eventually dominated the Scythians. At their greatest reported extent, these tribes ranged from the Vistula River to the mouth of the Danube and eastward to the Volga bordering on the shores of both the Black and Caspian Seas, as well as the Caucasus Mountains to the south. The territory which was known as Sarmatia to the Greco-Roman ethnographers encompassed what is today's central and southeastern Ukraine, southern Russia, Russian Volga, and South Ural regions, including part of the northeastern Balkans around Moldova. In the first century, in an alliance with the Germanic tribes, Sarmatians began encroaching upon the Roman Empire. In the 3rd century AD, the Sarmatian dominance of the Pontic Steppe was broken by the Germanic Goths. With the rise of the Huns and their invasions during the 4th century, many Sarmatians joined with the Goths, Vandals, and other Germanic tribes in an attempt to keep the Huns at bay. Unfortunately, this union was unable to contain the Hunnic drive westward and the Sarmatians, along with the Germanic tribes, found themselves pressed against the borders of the Roman Empire. With nowhere further to migrate, the Sarmatians eventually assimilated decisively and were absorbed by the Proto-Slavic population of Eastern Europe. What about the religion of the Sarmatians? Like so many ancient Indo-European peoples, the Sarmatians basically followed the same tradition of worshipping a pantheon of gods. This practice was also typical of the Scythians. According to Roman author Ammianus Marcellinius, the Sarmatians practice a ritual in dedication to their war god, in which he was worshipped in the form of an unsheathed sword and driven into the ground. This ritual may be interpreted as the erection of the axis mundi. From Latin that means earth between the celestial poles. In this ritual, it is believed it is a way to join the world of people with the world of gods. It is interesting to point out that the Scythians practice a similar ritual, however, on stationary altars. Considering the more nomadic character of the Sarmatians, it seems that the lack of using altars was more befitting to their mobile way of life. On an interesting note, the concept of Sarmatism, which was an ethnocultural concept, was developed by the Poles in creating the idea of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth. This is because both the Poles and the Lithuanians believed they were descended from the ancient Sarmatians. Together with the concept of golden liberty, it formed a central aspect of the Commonwealth's culture and society. At its core, it was the unifying belief that the people of the Polish Commonwealth, as mentioned earlier, were descended from the ancient Iranic Sarmatians, the legendary invaders of the Slavic lands of antiquity. This brings us to the end of the Sarmatians and the Golden Liberty. Thank you for once again joining us for this edition of Traveler's Tales. Just as a reminder, we post new videos every Tuesday and Friday. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified each time we post new videos. For your convenience, we have also posted our email address and Instagram information. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to Traveler's Tales. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Traveler's Tales will return with part two of 
the Sarmatians, and the Golden Liberty. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and history, Cartistos. <laughs>